Now, what's happening now as you get this extraordinary postmodern environment that we're in now, where the internet has opened up all of this extraordinary uh, exchange of ideas, and you have many, many Muslims that have migrated to the West, have imbibed Western liberalism, have imbibed many of the concepts of the West, they're struggling. There is a lot of soul-searching going on. We have, for instance, gay and lesbian people in the United States, and I'm sure here, but in the United States, we have gay and lesbian people who are born into Muslim families that want a gay and lesbian Islam. They want an Islam that is big enough to include the gay and lesbian community. And so there's a movement now there. You have people like Irshad Manji, who is also calling for this reform. Uh, the misunderstanding, I think the trouble with Islam, the trouble with Islam today, becoming a spokesman for a certain type of progressive movement. The question is, why ha is there so much distrust and trepidation by the Muslim grassroots? I would say the fundamental reason is because Lord Cromer, and I don't know if he went to Oxford, but Lord Cromer, who was the governor of Egypt, a close friend of Muhammad Abdus, said, a reformed Islam is not Islam. And I would argue that that is true and that's not true. It's true in that the fundamental thrust of Islam is that it was a reformist movement to begin with. Islam was redressing the problems that they saw inherent in Christianity, the sectarianism. People have no idea the number of sects of Christians that existed in the Middle East at that time. The Nestorians, the Jacobites, the Arians, the, the Byzantine Orthodox, the, the Catholics, all of these different groups. Uh, the Malibari Nasranis, who are still in existence in, in India, had to flee to, to India, who were Semitic Christians like Ebionites. All of these differences. And then also the Jewish uh, rejection of Jesus. So the Prophet Muhammad saw himself as coming to really reform the Abrahamic tradition. He put in place several constraints in his faith. And also in the Quran you will find many verses warning not to change the faith. There are many warnings about this. The Prophet, one of the, the most fundamental concepts in Muslim consciousness is the idea of bid'ah, is the idea of innovation, of changing the structure of things. And this is why the Muslims are very, very uh, wary of messing with the calibration of this religion. This is why when they see new ideas like this, they tend to react. This is the grassroots of Muslims. This, I do not believe, will change for any time uh, soon. I really don't. I think that you will find, and in the Muslim world, this is particularly acute, uh, far less so here. I think Western Muslims are extremely uh, tolerant of many divergent opinions. Even the spectrum of our understanding is quite broad, and what we allow to go under the umbrella is, is much broader than in many places in the Muslim world. Not all places, but in many places in the Muslim world.